The three-age system is a method used by some scholars to divide the past. The first stage, obviously, is preceded by the Years of the Trees and involves the Dark Lord Morgoth's war against Valinor. Just kidding. Actually, the first age is the Stone Age, characterized by the widespread use of stone tools. The Stone Age is itself divided into the Paleolithic, Mesolithic, and Neolithic, or Old, Middle, and New Stone Age. And each of these is actually further subdivided, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Next comes the Bronze Age, characterized by the widespread use of bronze tools and weapons. Then finally we have the Iron Age, characterized by the widespread use of iron tools and weapons. And sometimes we have the Chalcolithic as a transition period between the Stone and Bronze Age. During the Chalcolithic, copper tools saw widespread use. Sometimes we think of Stone Age people as being stupid and uncouth, but from their art, we can tell that they actually express a lot of the same hopes, fears, and dreams that we do in modern times, especially by the later part of the Stone Age. Relatively early in the Stone Age, humans learned to control fire and made use of primitive stone tools. By the Neolithic, humans began to domesticate plants and animals and started to make the transition from a hunter-gatherer nomadic lifestyle to a sedentary agricultural lifestyle. Proto-cities began to form, such as the settlement at Çatalhöyük in what's now Turkey, which was probably home to several thousand people. As permanent human settlements develop, humans began to take on more specialized roles in their communities. And partly as a result of this, more advanced stone tools are going to be designed. Finally, around 4000 BC, people began to develop tools made out of copper. And copper is relatively malleable, which means it's easy to shape in the way we want, but it also will be easily bent out of shape, so it's not exactly ideal. Sometime before the year 3000 BC, people in the Middle East figured out that if they combined copper with tin, they could create an alloy which was more durable than either copper or tin, and that was bronze. Bronze revolutionized human society, not only providing much better, more durable tools and weapons, but it also stimulated international trade. A lot of peoples, like the Hittites of Anatolia, might have access to copper, but they don't have any place to mine tin, so they would have to trade for that. And this creates the impetus to develop trade routes with other civilizations in order to acquire that tin that you need to smelt bronze. So for around 2,000 years, bronze would remain the most important metal to civilization. The four river valley civilizations, for instance, that we discussed in another video, Harappa, Sumeria, Shang China, Old Kingdom Egypt, those are all Bronze Age civilizations. Even the ancient Greece that we hear described in Homer's Iliad was a Bronze Age civilization. At one point in the Iliad, as the Trojan prince Hector is about to fight Achilles and he faces almost certain doom, the king of Troy remarks, It is entirely seemly for a young man killed in battle to lie mangled by the bronze spear. In his death all things appear fair. Not long after the legendary Trojan War probably took place around 1200 BC, the great civilizations of the late Bronze Age began to collapse. We can't be sure exactly what caused this late Bronze Age collapse, but civilizations that had been around for centuries, like Syria, the Hittite Empire in Anatolia, Mycenaean Greece, all of a sudden collapsed. We know that at the same time, there was an invasion by a mysterious people called the Sea Peoples. And of the civilizations in the ancient Near East, Egypt and the highly militarized Assyrians were among the few states that were able to beat back the Sea People invasions. Pharaoh Ramses III of Egypt boasted how his defeat of the Sea Peoples helped preserve peace in his domain. Ramses says, My sword is great and mighty. No one can stand before my might. I am a king rejoicing in slaughter, and so my reign is calmed in peace. 
Despite Ramsey's boast, the instability during the Bronze Age collapse disrupted international trade to the point where it became difficult to acquire tin from trade and therefore difficult to smelt bronze. Bronze objects from this time show evidence that they were melted down and reused over and over as bronze became more difficult to come by. It was in this environment that iron began to replace bronze as the metal of choice for tools and weapons. The knowledge of iron working spread throughout the Near East. Bloomeries, such as the one pictured here, were developed, enabling smiths to adjust the level of carbon and iron so that it could be worked and shaped into the desired object. In many parts of the world, such as Greece, the writing, architecture, and art style of the Bronze Age civilizations fades away, only to be replaced by the cultures of new people groups, such as the Dorians, armed with iron tools and weapons. Now, where we draw the end of the Iron Age is a bit trickier because iron doesn't suddenly get replaced, and it's not until the 19th century with the Besmer process that we see industrial-scale use of steel. But probably the most common place to mark the end of the Iron Age, at least in the West, is around 500 BC. This is around the time when Herodotus, called the father of history, began writing. And although people had been recording events since all the way back to the invention of writing in 3000 BC, Herodotus is going to be the first to systematically attempt to record events simply as they occurred. In the introduction of his histories, Herodotus writes, This is the inquiry of Herodotus of Heliconassus, that neither the deeds of men nor the works great and marvelous may be forgotten by the lapse of time, with Herodotus, we have a new means of dividing the past, not by what type of tools our archaeologists dig up, but by the historical written record. Now, this presentation of the 3H system has some blind spots. Obviously, the chronology for the diffusion of bronze working and iron working is going to be different in different parts of the world. The late Bronze Age collapse, and the work of Herodotus for that matter, are not going to be near as impactful in China, for example, as in the Mediterranean world. Also, a lot of parts of the world don't really follow this progression from stone to bronze to iron. In sub-Saharan Africa, for example, the Bantus, who had iron, conquered the indigenous peoples who were still essentially in the Neolithic Age. So a lot of sub-Saharan Africa jumps straight from the Neolithic all the way into the Iron Age. Additionally, a lot of areas of the world were still in the Stone Age when contacted and later usually conquered by Europeans. So this three-age system really doesn't hold up in cases like that. Still, human society is shaped by the materials that we have access to. And for many parts of the world, accounting for local variants, this three-age system is a useful way for subdividing history.